Hey, test, 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 test. Okay, what's up? So, Well, what I got going on here is we are practicing a little bit with my uh, Microsoft Surface. And this is really just a test run to see if this would even work. And it apparently is working. So what I got going on is the Microsoft Surface is connected to my main desktop PC. Because when I was streaming just from the Microsoft Surface, I wasn't really getting... A very good stream I was getting uh, I was I was having some issues with connections uh, and <clears throat> lag and all that kind of stuff um, the other thing that was going on a lot was um, when I was just streaming from the Microsoft Surface is that Adobe Fresco which I have open here wasn't quite able to uh, handle both streaming and um, running fresco at the same time the surface couldn't handle both of these both these programs especially when i turned on the live brushes so i'm messing around a little bit today with live brushes and just going to practice a simple watercolor I'm, I'm using the watercolor live brushes and i'm really just testing them i haven't really used them yet <sighs> i just did to see them so this is just kind of a test of to see if this is going to work so um Let's see. I've got an example image up here. So, uh, Fresco is Adobe's drawing, digital drawing program. Um, it seems to be a little laggy on the Surface. Um, this is a Surface Pro 5. It seems to be a little laggy on it, especially um, if I have it plugged in, it does a little better. So, um, this this watercolor, just playing around with it, it seems to be very, very similar to watercolor with a few differences. Um one thing is it doesn't dry. At least I haven't figured out how to dry it yet. Like, it basically acts like wet watercolor, like, all the time. So, uh, if you've ever painted with watercolor, you'll see a lot of similarities. But I'm, ast I'm astounded by how close this is. So, these live brushes over here, we've got live watercolor brushes. And I'm going to start off, I'm just going to use this flat brush. And again, I'm really just practicing with something here. So... working on the shape this is going to be a cat and this is just a simple watercolor painting of a cat I've got the brush pretty small right now I'll probably make it a little bigger here in a minute Okay, so there's my basic outline of a cat, and I'm going to enlarge this brush quite a bit. So you can drag and click here. We'll do this, and so normally with watercolors, I work, you know, kind of like light to dark, um, and that's pretty much the same for all paint. And so I might put on my light washes and then I, you know, I'm going to let them dry and then I'm going to put on more washes. But with this, with this program, that doesn't seem to work, or at least what I tested with it earlier, because once you've put on paint, it just stays wet. So 
these are water droplets. I mean, they they they're kind of amazing me because they act and look so much like real water, uh, real watercolor, and the way that the water flows. So with watercolor brush, you've got over here you've got an adjustment for water flow. So right now it's set at sixty. I that's how far out the water, like kind of like how much water. So if I put one hundred in here, and you get there's one hundred. Now let's try the same blotch with zero water flow the paint kind of comes on more like you know more like you would expect it kind of turns the live effect off when you use lower water flow so um so just a quick test now that is on high water flow and yeah so when you put paint on that's kind of what i thought when you put paint on with a low water flow effect then, it, then it's as if the paint is dry. Um, so let's, and then, but once wet watercolor is there, you still get the water effect, see? You still get the water effect, but here there's no water effect because this has all been put on dry. Now, if I turn this up, yeah, sometimes it just, like I'm clicking on it and I've clicked on it like 50 times and it's just not really working. There it goes. It does get laggy sometimes, and I think it would work better if it had more, if it was plugged into the uh, power adapter right now. I don't have it plugged in. Okay, going back to my cat. Um, let's try some darker brown now. I'm going to switch to a low. Low flow. So here's the problem. The paint is definitely spreading out more than I want it to. Here. And like so I guess the way to deal with that would be to just erase that. And try putting it on thinner. Okay, go back to this waff, it's soft wash brush now, but I'm going to turn water flow way down. And this is pretty dark in my reference image. I think I need to switch the brushes too. This soft wash thing is a little too, let's do basic. There's the detail, there's the round. That puts on a lot of thick color, but that's too thick. That's not what I want. And it loses, the, the basic watercolor brush loses some of that softness that I like. Let's try the watercolor flat wash. So I've noticed once you put on some color, once you put on some color, like, and I try to put, like, I've got 100% black now, and it really doesn't even affect the color, but it just, it's so wet, it just keeps, it's like, it's like trying to paint, like, it feels like trying to paint with way, way, way too much water. So, you know, you turn to, you know, like, I would turn the water down, but it doesn't matter because there's already a whole bunch of water there so it still kind of flows out that does help though that is getting the color more kind of where i want it to be now here i haven't actually painted yet so you can see the black is coming down full strength like i want it to i want a little brown here
doesn't look very good really with the water effect turned all the way off. Let's turn some water effect back on. Ugh. Blah. Ruined it. Try the detail brush. I mean, it's a really interesting... It's a really interesting concept that they've come up here. But, I mean, I'm sure if I could figure it out better, but it, it's, it, it is seriously a lot like painting with real watercolors, but without the ability to really control them the way I'm used to. You know, I'm like used to being able to, like... Oop, too big. I'm used to being able to control watercolors by controlling, you know, the amount of actual water in the brush and with this I just can't it's like I just don't feel like I can at least that's one way to repair an edge I guess you can just erase what you don't want okay I'm going to return back to my I really do like the look of the soft wash brush, though. It's really amazing. And we'll turn the flow back up a little higher. I think the default is like 60% on this one. Jeez. Wow. It just turns it into a gigantic mess. It's like impossible to to really control. It just spreads out so much. Really, it shouldn't be crossing this line. Like once it hits that line, it should be like, okay, that's where I'm stopping. This is 100% black. Man, it's like, it's pretty awesome. Oh, that's a huge brush, by the way. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I have the brush just way too big. Yep, that was my problem. Okay. Now it's way more reasonable. That's a pretty cool effect, too. If you paint the color right on the edge you definitely get a lot that actually kind of does what i almost wanted to do all right let's give this kitty an eye I'm making it a little bit bigger because I think it's going to kind of, I think when I start, um, and here's opacity over here, so I want to kind of, no, that didn't work. That's just opacity to color, so I want to turn the eraser opacity down really low. There we go. Wow, that's a really cool eraser effect. That's a great eraser when it's so soft like that. This program, I've really just started using it. I really don't know what I'm doing at all with it, uh, which is kind of similar for a lot of, of this drawing tablet software, just getting into it. Been using uh, Autodesk Sketchbook. Of course, I'm really used to uh, using Photoshop quite frequently. 
That's a pretty nice. That's a pretty nice effect right there. Almost what I was wanting to get. Okay, this cat looks like it has a blue eye. And I'm going to make the brush really small and see if I can control this. So far so good. Yeah, you got to use really small brush size. Okay, now we'll do uh, something in this range of almost cerulean blue. And, oh, that's beautiful the way that kind of, oh, look at that. That is incredible the way that kind of connects together, the color. That is so cool. brush do I have right now the detail yeah I've got the detail brush okay I'm gonna turn water flow way down That is such awesome blending. I think I need a little more flow to do. It does slowly. It's so cool the way it just slowly kind of fades out. I mean, it's so much like painting with real water color it just it's still blowing my mind every time I every time I put down a new brush stroke with it it just blows my mind okay let's switch back to the soft brush and try to fix up this foot My real cat's just meowing at me, Mr. Which one is that? That's canolan. Ooh, some red. Put a little red in there. Why not? It's your cat. Do what you want with it. Okay, so I need a really light tan and a ton of water. And this part here is just going to be a, well, more of a tan. Uh, there we go. And I need that. Uh, there's a huge difference between the small brush and a big brush. So, yeah, there's a lot of advantages to digital painting, like just hitting the undo button. That's so cool that you can just hit the undo button. Don't, nope, don't work. I really just want to put a very, very, very light, almost white color on this right here. And it's stuck. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, the lag is kind of annoying for sure with this software. And there's wet on wet blending that I really didn't want. See, I would, I, I want this to be dry. I don't want that amount of wet on wet blending right now. I want that the dark color to stay put. Um, I, I wouldn't mind a little bit of wet on wet blending just to create kind of a shadow here against the leg. So we'll just do it and see what happens. Well, I got a, a cat.
That's too much red right there. Yeah, the, the eraser, oh man, it does. It erases like magic on this. It looks awesome. Looks like in my reference, there's the, a hint of a back foot right there. And I'm going to try... It's almost actually a little bit of like a grayish blue. So if you want to have more control, just like you would think, make a smaller brush. Don't overlap. We've got a space between the water here. So it, as soon as the two waters overlap, well, not bad. What do I got the water flow set on this thing? 100%. Cool. That's too much, too much saturation. It doesn't do what I want it to do, so I need to unsaturate that. And I think the way to do it would just be a lot more gray paint. Maybe throw in a little brown now on top of it. And it looks like I need some pink here. I really don't want these colors to mix. So I'm going to try to turn the flow way down. And I'm going to pick just a slightly darker pink. See what happens if I kind of... Yep, not do it. That's perfect. Well, I'm definitely not very good at using uh, this particular piece of software yet, but I'm learning for sure and feel like I'm improving a little bit. I just don't like this area of pure white. I mean, I really want like, I just want like some kind of look. I mean, like even really, really just water from your water bowl and watercolor has kind of like a look to it. Kind of a grayish, like something's there, even though nothing's there. That's not really doing anything. 
try more water. And see, that's not what I want. I don't want to pull all that color. I just want... I just want like a look of... Kind of like that right there. See, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I don't want to pull that color over. There ought to be a like a drying tool almost, like a tool where you could just be like, now it's dry. Whoa, how did that happen? Where'd that crazy mess come from? painting pure white and just putting a lot of it on it does eventually if you just keep doing it it does kind of kind of get the thing i was yeah see that kind of gets the effect i was going for it now there is a a hint of gray here let's try just a very light gray a cool gray Oh, it just says, see, it pops up there, pure water. I just noticed that. Pure water. Does that mean there's not enough paint there to actually... Why does that say pure water? Why am I not putting any color on? Oh, what's this little guy doing? Okay, now I'm putting pure water on. I see, I'm, I hadn't noticed that before. So there's, okay, so there's blue. That's pure water. Tap it again. Then there's your paint. Pure water. This is some pretty intensely pigmented paint that they've got here. This is definitely not the Crayola brand. Here, we'll give the little kitten some green stuff to hang out with. Now we'll switch to pure water. Ah, pure water. I can't, you know, this has definitely got to take some massive process power to move all these pixels around because it's like pretty realistic the way it's moving all of this, all of this paint around. This thing isn't in my way. I need to get rid of it. There it goes.
Well, what a mess. Okay, anyway, that's enough for now. I'll learn more, and I'll try again another day. See you later.